Mastering Terraria may take hundreds of hours and half of your sanity. That's why I've collected all the knowledge I gained from Reddit, official and fandom wikis, other YouTubers and my own experience. Then compiled it into 100 advanced tips to save you some time. This is aiming for gaming. And today we're aiming for advanced gaming. The most powerful mechanic in Terraria is the immunity frame. Once an enemy hits you, you receive temporary immunity to further damage. Combining this with weak enemies like skeletons allows us to create a damage prevention setup. With a multitude of skeletons constantly dealing one damage, bosses will struggle to find an opportunity to harm you. And that's it? This structure can carry you through almost the entire game, making master mode bosses a joke. With the mechanic, you'll be able to build this setup anywhere you want. The cross necklace is a hard mode must-have accessory that further enhances this setup by doubling your immunity frames. With this, you'll be able to easily handle all three mechanical bosses at once and much more. Hoik is another powerful trick that allows you to reach new destinations or exploit boss fights. To do so, you must alter the shape of a placed block and add an entrance platform shaped properly as well. This will push you in the desired direction. The more blocks you modify, the farther you will travel. The game has an NPC limit of 200, meaning that no enemy boss or NPC can spawn if there are already 200 NPCs in the world at the moment. This can be exploited to defeat master mode bosses easily. By releasing as many critters as the game allows, then reaching the NPC limit with target dummies, you will spawn bosses which cannot fight you at all. Another game-breaking limit is the projectile limit. If you fire 1000 projectiles, such as flares that persist for 10 minutes, you can trivialize boss fights against enemies which rely on projectiles. You can even defeat a Deerclops with a pickaxe, for example. It's possible to store Ethernian mana in chests between events. Just touch the event, place 10 initial mana in the chest and log out. Having enough mana will allow you to one-shot Master Mode Daytime Empress of Light if you desire. The Sergeant United Shield has parry mechanics, allowing you to reflect damage. With a proper setup, this can solo kill bosses like Master Mode Duke Fishron. Equipping a pressure plate reveals natural wires, which can be used to set up traps or boss chasing arenas. The Star Fury from the floating islands can highlight the underground or even the dungeon, kill enemies and break pots, making it a perfect tool for exploration. A single bucket of lava can create a fantastic farming arena. For an easy queen bee farm without any fight, create an arena with three segments. Place a beehive in one segment, enemy statues in another and a trigger in between. The boss will just kill itself, making you a lot of money. A jungle grass farm is an excellent source of critters for fishing, plantera bulbs and much more. Purchase mushroom seeds from the dryad when she is in the mushroom biome. Then toss them into shimmer to obtain rare jungle grass seeds. Plant jungle grass on several mud blocks, actuate them and collect all the grown items at once. A gem corn farm is a simple way to obtain gems for selling. Craft several gemacorns, create an underground plant area 17 blocks high, plant trees while keeping gaps and replant them once they mature. The growth cycle usually takes only one day. Some stages spawn enemies, critters or items when triggered by wires. Although the drop rate is usually nullified for mob spawned this way, some enemies will still drop items. A good example is the golem stature, which yields night vision helmets and geodes, a breakable source of random gems that can be sold for a decent amount of money. Keep in mind that enemies won't drop any loot if they are killed only by lava or traps. You must deal damage to them as well. The crimson rod is a great option here. If you don't want to mine sand but still need glass, sand farming is for you. Craft a sand gun using a preservation potion, get some sand, activate the ammunition box, stand near the wall and place a torch below it. While shooting at the wall, you'll save half of your sand and the torch will convert sand blocks into collectibles. In 10 minutes, you'll get a full sand stack for free, essentially turning you into an ant lion. The slime stuff combined with a lucky coin will yield coins when slimes hit targets for a pitiful 1 damage. Use it as an additional source of money or set up a farm. Actuators with timers allow you to place deployables such as explosives on a single block. If you create a elevator, destroy blocks below the map boundaries, actuate the floor below the Eterna crystal and drop it, the event will break completely, allowing you to cheese it. 
projectiles from Flame Lash, Magic Missile and Rainbow Rod will seek your enemies forever if you place two teleporters with quickly moving enemies. This can help you one-shot most of the master mode bosses in the game. Justing lances deal damage based on your current speed. With the map and railgun setup, it's the only weapon in the game that can actually one-shot all bosses with huge numbers. Close doors with blocks during invasions to prevent enemies from entering. Yo-yos can easily pass through one opened block and kill your enemies with no risk. Purchase bubbles from the party girl to build intermediary honey healing blocks for your arena. They will give you the honey buff if you pass through them, but slow you down. However, drinking a flipper potion will negate the slow effect completely. Buy a blend matic from the steampunker after defeating mechanical bosses and combine gel with stone to craft asphalt blocks. With decent boots equipped, you'll easily reach a running speed of 72 miles per hour on an asphalt arena, which is much faster than the speed most bosses can keep up with. Change the shape of your building blocks with a hammer. This might completely change the way your buildings look. Complex logic from the steampunker NPC combined with your creativity will create amazing designs for one-shot setups. Fireworks deal 150 damage to bosses on contact. With enough fireworks, you can defeat master mode bosses and celebrate your victory at the same time. Placing a bottle on the workbench will unlock potion recipes. Keep in mind that it's not as efficient as an alchemy table because it won't occasionally save materials when you make a potion. Crafting stations are still accessible if they are placed on the platforms above. You don't need walls at all. If you build this house design, it will be suitable for housing. However, you must manually assign an NPC to such a house. They'll ignore it otherwise. Barrels are a cheaper alternative to chests with the same number of inventory slots. So, if you wish to make something unique or save iron bars, try barrels. Traps are totally worth it in some situations. Cheating bosses with natural geysers is one of the most satisfying things you will see in Terraria. You don't need a guide voodoo doll to summon the wall of flesh, just let the guide himself sink in lava. Keeping the nurse near the boss arena is a decent strategy as you can heal to full health with no cooldown. That's huge. The Dryad is also a good candidate for your arena setup. Her blessing will buff your defense, add health regen and thorns effect while debuffing enemies too. After beating the wall of flesh, you might notice a tortured soul. Use purification powder on him to unlock that tax collector NPC. This guy will passively collect 50 copper coins from every housed NPC every minute, capping at 25 gold. These values might vary depending on his happiness. NPC happiness directly affects their prices, so moving an NPC to a house he likes with neighbors he likes will result in discounts. While pylons require two NPCs to operate, slimes do count toward that limit and they can also share the room with the NPCs. If you're playing a hardcore character and need tombstones, just kill an NPC. Sitting on a toilet or floating in the water with an inner tube equipped will boost your fishing power by 5 points. The tipsy status from alcohol will grant you another 5 points. Nice. The sonar potion will greatly improve your fishing experience, especially when you're aiming for quest rewards. Great potions are essential if you want to farm for those missing boots or whatever else you need from crates. Fishing during the blood moon allows you to catch rare enemies instead of fish. They will drop various uncommon loot. Fishing during rain and at specific times will increase your resulting fishing power. If you eat food and sit on a toilet, you'll get poo blocks. From this, you can build your own poo house with a unique animation and sounds. Yeah. There is a weapon that can shoot falling stars. It's called the Star Cannon, it pierces through enemies and can be considered one of the most powerful pre hard mode weapons. The hard mode version is even cooler. Place a heavy workbench to craft complex mechanisms such as boulders or bouncy boulders which can literally cheese the bosses on master mode. Craft pocket watches near the table to always know the current time. During party time you can buy pig grenades from the party girl. When placed and attacked, they return most of their cost and also give you valuable bacon. There are two potions from different evil biomes you can craft and they do stack. So if you wish to get both, consider fishing in two worlds. Not all sets require three items for the set bonus. A good example is a diamond rope with a wizard hatch, which already gives you a set bonus. So feel free to add any legs you wish. Desert fossils when processed in the extractinator will yield money, gems, ores and sturdy fossil. Craft and sell bone throwing knife from the latter for additional money. Some items such as illegal gun parts are available only at night. 
Most summon weapons, especially in the late game, are more powerful with a ruthless modifier than with a mythical modifier, because summons do not land critical hits, while the damage bonus is bigger for ruthless. Equipping one of the gem rope variants in the armor slot without a wizard hat will boost team's spawn rate by 5 times. Most of the cool vanity items can be crafted, just make some silk and enjoy your new look for free. The best weapon in the game is Zenith. You can craft it after defeating the Moon Lord and obtaining 10 swords from different bosses, events and locations. The fastest item for mining is the Drill Containment Unit Mount, which is crafted from 6 types of bars after you beat the Moon Lord. It trivializes your exploration and underground mining, so definitely try it out. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, landing your precious like would be my best reward. If you place 7 tombstones next to each other, they will create a cemetery biome, unlocking additional recipes for the heavy workbench, such as beehives. Some blocks will not be destroyed even with explosives, such as dungeon blocks. This allows you to explore some cheesing options. Surface level dungeon bricks can be mined at any point in the game, even with a copper pickaxe. Equipping pressure plates or switches will help you disarm traps like the dead man's chest, even without finding the mechanic. Elevators are a great way to descend quickly. To easily make one, drink a Ferrofall potion and throw dynamite right below you. Craft a biome side potion to reveal evil biomes. This might help you a lot if you're planning to purify the world. To prevent evil biomes from spreading naturally, you can leave a gap with a tunnel. I prefer at least 5 or 6 blocks gap to accentuate my borders. Buy a clean terminator and green solution from the steampunker to start purifying your vault. It's the fastest way compared to mining it out or using purification powder. During the blood moon or solar eclipse you can buy purple or red solution depending on your vault type from the steampunker and spread evil biome when needed. Destroying more altars than initial 3 will spawn more of the vault assigned hard mode ores. The amount of ores spawn decreases, so destroying 12 altars will roughly double the ore provided by the first 3, but that's still great. Water candles and peace candles when turned on will affect the spawn rate of enemies. This is viable combined with a battle potion when you're farming for a specific drop or when you're building something huge and don't want to deal with too many enemies. Sunflowers grant you a happy status and also reduce the spawn rate of enemies. Placing enough seeds or blocks of a specific type allows you to create artificial biomes. If you need obsidian or honey blocks, just make contact with lava or honey with some water from a bucket or the nearest underground lake. Drinking a hunter potion will help you find friendly NPCs. But this doesn't mean you will be able to help them. Destroying shadow orbs or crimson hearts is a great way to get early game weapons. You can safely break two of them with bombs or even more, the boss spawns after each third orb. However, if you teleport to your base, the boss will despawn, letting you break three orbs again. The easiest way to find Shimmer is to mine a elevator right next to the ocean biome on the jungle side. Shimmer can be transported with pumps. Shimmer reflects some projectiles, such as the ones from the Flower of Fire. In other words, you can stack enough projectiles to one-shot some bosses. Shimmer also affects arrows, pushing them upward. So, if you build an arena with honey above that does the opposite, shimmer below and a bubble in between, you can stack a lot of arrows to cheese some bosses, especially if you use Tsunami. Don't forget to drink the potion to breathe in water. Don't be silly me. Critters in the shimmer area usually spawn in their alternative form, which means that you can sell them for some coins. NPCs change their appearance when they are thrown into shimmer. It's much easier to collect the missing components for things like Ankh shield with shimmer, some of them transform into their counterpart. Some items such as hearts, fruits, gold worms and so on will be transformed into unique items that grant you permanent buffs. If you need any ore except titanium, just throw its counterpart into shimmer. This will be the easiest way to craft a specific armor set. All four emblems form a transformation cycle in shimmer. So, instead of farming the wall of flesh for a specific emblem, simply get it from the one you already have. Some gear changes into another set when thrown into shimmer, like this ancient shadow piece for example. Also, if you need a component from a complex item, shimmer will split it for you. You can increase your luck up to 1 by combining positive luck values from different sources such as garden gnomes, biome specific torches, coins, ladybugs, luck potions and so on. Touching a naturally spawned ladybug grants the ladybug luck effect that decreases linearly to zero over time. 
killing ladybugs is a bad idea as it will reduce your luck instead. The Garden Gnome, which increases your luck by playing 0.2, can be acquired when a gnome touches sunlight. Your current luck at the time of the traveling merchant's arrival will increase the odds of getting more and better items from him. Clustering 101 torches underground will start the Torch God event in which you must survive torch projectiles. If you survive more than 95, you'll get an item called Torch God's Favor. This permanently grants you the ability to automatically convert regular torches and campfires in your hand to the current biome's torch or campfire variant, increasing the player's luck in most areas. The quick stack feature is a lifesaver when you need to move items into appropriate chests. Certain items will show you the location of enemies, your DPS and much more, even if they are placed in your inventory. Later on, you can even make a cell phone or shell phone, which will combine all stats in one inventory slot. Getting a summon weapon is good for any class, not only summoner. This is additional DPS after all. If you are planning to try out a new difficulty, consider typing secret seeds like Get Fixed Boy. They will change your game experience completely. While the Get Fixed Boy world is generating, you can catch falling stars with your cursor. Each star will increase the amount of generated stuff in your vault, such as hearts and traps, up to 20% for 100 caught stars. If you want to reuse your character appearance in the future, copy it during the creation and save somewhere. Then paste it during the creation of another character. The slimy saddle dropped from the king slime can be used as a fast descending tool with no risk of dying from a jump. Crafting a bed, placing it in a temporary house and setting it as a spawn point is a great way to save some time on travel if you need to spend too much time in a specific location. If you buy a party center from the party girl, you can activate a party manually at any time. I hope with this guide you have achieved what you were aiming for today. Also check out these two videos with all craziest master mode boss strategies at once, or simply visit my channel and consider subscribing to not miss out even more guides. It's that easy. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.